in our format. <clears throat> Don't have a lot of time. And so I want to maximize the time that I do have so I can position myself to accomplish the most. And not even necessarily accomplish, but just be the most. You know? Life is not about doing what you want to do. If you're, if you are sitting around waiting for or constantly telling yourself, when I get to, or when I get, or when my income's here, or when I don't have to live in a house with a bunch of guys, or I don't have to go to meetings every night of the week, or fill in the blank. If you're, if you're spending your life living that way, you're never going to be happy. Because you're never going to get there. So you, you better figure out how to be happy in the moment that you're in. Your life changes and the people around you change. And what I like about what he says, when I saw it, it just was like, I've seen a lot of videos, a lot. And that was the most impactful 10, 15 minutes I had ever heard someone talk about. And so once you hear someone talk about something, you got to do it. And so why do people fail in life? Anyone? Anyone? Number one reason people fail? Because yeah. mm -hmm. you don't try. Yeah. No, there's plenty of people that try. That is it. Yeah, but why? What is it? Why do you fail? They see, see it, it as failure. Right. Say it again? They see it as a failure. Possibly, possibly that, that is kind of part of what he was talking about. But that's not why people fail as a whole. Poor execution. So, I've watched that video at least 50 times now. Made notes because I'm trying to do it right. I want to get all of what he has said in that short three minute video. I want to get all of it. Because if it's working for him, there's no reason why it can't work for me and all my clients and my family. And so I want to make sure that I get it all and understand it all. Because there's things in life that we have time for. If you're like me, there's, you don't have time for anything. Certainly not yourself. So, if I can take these 10-15 minutes in the morning and maximize that, and it's having that kind of effect for him, I believe that it will have that same type of effect for me. And it has. It really has, and it's it's forced me to look in that mirror, and because it you you think it sounds easy, wait till you try it. Talk because you're used to doing things a certain way. Oh Lord Jesus, I want a girlfriend. I want a car. I want a better job. I want my mom and dad not to be sick. I want my wife to quit screaming at me. I want this. I want that. What would you say is the hardest part of that for you? Well, the first part, the first thing, the, the first part of it was changing the way that I speak to my creator. That was tough. I didn't realize how 
in regards to that type of thinking, I was off. One of the big things I hear a lot, you know, if we would do a, a quick little prayer teaching, is I hear people say, Dear God, I'm not making fun of anybody, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but if you start your prayer with, Dear God, it's like you're writing a letter to Him. Which means it's got to be postmarked and sent out. He's not there. When you start a prayer, Dear God. He ain't there. That's the first sign for me when I'm listening to somebody to see where the relationship with God is at. Are they talking to Him? Or are they kind of talking... Adam from a distance because in their mind that's where he is and so that's the first thing is you know God is here he is with you when you speak to him you speak to him as such <laughs> you have that connection to him or the ability to connect with him in such a way that's pretty awesome. You know, I'm just little old me, and people don't have a big access connection to me. You know, you can't just get me on the horn. It's going to take a little bit, a couple text, maybe some emergency messages, and then maybe I'll probably back in a day or two or maybe a week. But here we got our creator is within a handshake away and we can do business with them well when you're praying you're doing business with God he's 51% owner of this business and you're 49 so anytime you open your mouth towards him it's that's what it's about you're that close to him he's your business partner So it's, hey, what's up? Here I am. i got a big day coming up ahead of me. You know. So, I know it's going to be great because you made this day. And I know you are going to maximize this day for me. And I know you're going to give me the ability to talk to salesmen and drive someone around to look at a new car when you don't when you don't have a car that has AC much less a brand new car so I know you're going to use me in this moment I can see it finished we're going to go see them all it's all done and I praise you and thank you for that Lord and then I'm going to come back to the house hopefully not have any new problems but if there are Lord I know they're your problems and we're going to have a meeting. And unfortunately, Lord, I haven't had time to consider what we might talk about. But I know you have, so it's, it's good. And I, like he says, and then I, I begin to move out. So the hardest part at the beginning was that conversation for me. Because I, I mean, I really didn't think that I was a whiner or uh, an asker and I'm not saying that that's wrong but based on what Tony's talking about I believe there's a better way and that is to connect with your creator the one who is the great provider for your entire life particularly this day and just kind of imagine, I'm getting the goose pimples right now talking about it. Imagine all of that He is streaming through you, out your fingertips, out your toes, with completion to accomplish whatever this day brings. And so, like He said again, I got a lot of problems in my life, a lot. I got a couple sitting around this table. They could be good problems, or they could be bad problems. I got problems at home. I got problems with my mortgage. I got problems with my cars. I got all sorts of problems. 
But if I sat there and said, Lord, I know you know this, but we really need help in this area, or this area, or this area, or this area. I didn't realize how that was setting me up to carry around all these problems. Because even though, even though I'm done, and even though I have an extreme amount of faith in God because of what He's done over in my life in the last 11 years, I still was walking away from that meeting carrying all these problems. And so when I heard Tony speak about this, about imagining these things fulfilled, uh, it changed everything for me. But it took a couple of days of catching myself and rewording the way in which I worded things to be able to position myself to experience the blessing of praying things complete. Receiving that power and then praying things complete. As I work my inner circle and then go out, Robin, Austin Cross, all you guys here, you know, maybe something that jumps out. And one of the big things that I've been seeing completed, which is God just gave this to me, so another goose pimple moment, is uh, I have been praying for extreme um, for people to understand what we're doing in, a, in such a way that it would change their hearts in the form of large donations to Adam and I. And I got a text today from a guy out of the blue. Hey, I want to make a donation. Which way is the best way for me to do it? I don't know how much the donation was from. I didn't even look. But I, to me, that was like, that was kind of strange. I've been praying for that in this. That's one of those things that he's talking about at the end, the completion part. What we're trying to do is move to the next level here. That obviously takes finances. We are meeting with um, uh, the Sullivan Foundation some someday in the month of July with Sandy and her husband. He started out back, bonefish, yada yada yada, public beach, he's got stake in, he owned the racehorse. I mean, big opportunity in this one. You know, and so seeing that meeting complete in the best way that it could possibly be has been part of my three and three at the end. And one of the three and three has been for people to understand what it is that is going on here at the Adonai House and the Adonai Foundation and Adonai Restoration in such a way that it moves them to support it. But like support it in ways that are undeniable. That he, that he was involved in it. You know, and so I've been focusing on that. And like every day this week, uh, I, Robin hasn't mentioned anything to me, and I'm surprised because I always say, did you go to the mailbox? Are there any checks in the mail? And it's not that I'm, we're starving for the check, waiting for it to get there so we can pay a bill. It's I'm waiting to see what's going on on the metaphysical level out there based on my praying for these things in such a way. I'm not praying for these things for me. I'm praying these things for you and for the people that we don't know that will come in contact with us. And so that's how you would define selfish versus kingdom type of praying. And yeah, it's just really been changing my focus so that when I do get put in positions that are difficult and I know they're going to come and all, usually they could do a lot of them come how I am able to get through it, manage it is completely different than if I would have started my day off praying and asking God to solve my problems 
I'm not asking him that. I'm asking him to fulfill me with all my needs. He's a great provider. And it's interesting because what he talks about there at the end is you're rewiring. We weren't born this way. Well, if you don't believe this, just simply pick up a science book and you will see the truth about our body and how we are made. How neurological pathways work in our brain and how our brain can close, like, let's say, problem solution. And if we do something over a long period of time, there's only one neurological pathway from that problem to that solution. But if we force ourselves, retrain our brains to do something different, there's scientific proof and it will show these new neurological pathways opening up in your brain. And that's what he's talking about. You're reprogramming yourself. And it works. Unfortunately, it's not control, alt, delete, zip it out, reboot up the new software and talk to Microsoft for a little bit and then go. It ain't like that. It's something that you got to do day in and day out and it's got to be the most important thing in your life. And right now, for me, where I'm at, beginning, beginning of my day, that right there is probably the most important act of obedience in my life. 